Now, when we go back to uh, sentence embeddings and complex or costly methods for sentence embeddings that are based on encoder decoder models, then uh, how do these look like? Um, so uh, one of the first ideas proposed in the year uh, 214 to 15, I guess, is or 215 is uh, or let's take an encoder decoder model. Uh, let the input sequence be equal to the output sequence. Um, and this is also called an autoencoder. Um, and then take the final vector on the input side to be the sentence representation. And uh, well, in pictures, it just looks very similar to what we've seen previously. Um, um, you put in uh, a sentence on the input side, you, you feed it through your RNN, uh, you get a hidden representation, and then from this hidden representation, you should be able to decode the sentence. Um, yeah, so this is the idea. They call this sequential denoising autoencoder. Uh, and it's also clear the better this representation here, uh, the better you will be able to restore the sentence from the, from the input. So, um, um, well, a representation that has the property that you can retrieve uh, the output sentence from the representation, that must be a very good uh, representation. So it must, uh, it must store information about the semantics of the sentence, the words that are in the sentence, the, uh, w the way they are arranged, the syntax, and the linear order, right, and the grammar. So it has to store all of this information. Uh, why is it called denoising? Because, um, well, this is just, um, uh, they also put a little bit of noise uh, on, on the input, I guess. So this is a common practice. Um, if you do not put noise, then it's sometimes possible that, uh, well, this hidden representation, if it has enough cap capacity, so if it's large enough, it can, uh, it can be a very trivial function. Uh, one that is basically copying the, the input on the hidden representation, then from this input uh, restores the, uh, the, the input again, which is then a very simple task. But, um, well, this would not be, this is of course, if you just copy the words here, uh, if you copy the indices, for example, then uh, this, this cannot be a good representation, right? This does not have the property that uh, semantically similar sentences to have similar representations because the one hot indices of the words uh, are never a good representation of the of the sentence of the words and they are also not a good representation of the sentence. Uh, that's that's why people sometimes put noise on the input and that's why they they call this uh, denoising autoencoder. Then uh, more popular than this sequential denoising autoencoder is the skip thought approach, which has been introduced by the group of Geoffrey Hinton in 2015. And what they do is they, uh, uh, that's basically also an encoder decoder model. So this is the input coming in through the RNN, it's encoded, then it's decoded. What they do is uh, they predict the previous and the next sentence in, in a book, for example, right? And the idea is, um, well, we have, uh, we want an encoding such that from this decoding, we, we do not produce the actual input, but the previous sentence and the next sentence. And of course, this previous and next sentence also closely related to the current sentence. Um, and, uh, yeah, and what is the, the difference to our naive idea number one, where we also had where we wanted to predict the previous and next sentence? Well, the, the main difference here is the input is running through an RNN and the output is also running through an RNN, whereas the idea, uh, the naive idea number one was just to concatenate all the words and then run, run it through an MLP, basically, right? So this is the uh, this is the difference, and of course, this this approach can be um, can be combined with the previous one, right? So the previous was given the input, predict the input again, and here is given the input, predict the next two, the the previous and the next sentence, and uh, we could of course combine these two for hopefully better performance, namely to predict the previous sentence, the current sen the the sentence itself, and the next sentence. Yeah, so this is skip thought. Now, if we compare skip thought and sequential denoising autoencoder, then we have to say that skip thought 
requires text to be in context. So uh, we need to have like, for example, a novel where the preceding and the following sentences are coherent. If you take just a random sentence to be predicted, uh, if, if you shuffle, if you take a coherent document and you shuffle all the sentences, then the previous and next sentences are not related to the current sentence in the middle. And therefore, um, and therefore the, the representation that a result would probably not be very meaningful. Um, so you, skip thought really requires coherent text and sequ the sequential denoising auto encoder does not require that. So it could be easier, it could be easier uh, to apply. So in a, in a Twitter corpus where you only have like one or two coherent sentences uh, and the next one are from the next tweet, um, this could be easier applied, for example, than the skip thought approach. And therefore it can, use of, can make use of more data. Another very popular sentence, uh, model is the infersent model. So this is a supervised model. So the previous two models were unsupervised or self-supervised. So what is, uh, what is unsupervised, self-supervised? Well, they have no labels. They just, uh, they just take uh, unlabeled corpus and then they make labels themselves, right? This is also called uh, self-labeling or self-supervision. But basically that doesn't have to be any human labels. Uh, in contrast to that, InfraDescent does use supervision, so and it trains on a high-quality data set, namely the Stanford Natural Language Inference data set, also called SNLI, uh, abbreviated as SNLI. And uh, how does the uh, training data look like? Um, well, it's like you have to do logical, uh, logical um, uh, inferences, so you have what they call in logic a premise, which would be a, a girl in a red coat, blue hat, blue head wrap and jeans is making a snow angel and you have a hypothesis a girl outside blaze in the snow so you have these two sentences and you have to infer uh, whether these two sentences are logically related and the label here would be entailment so you have two sentences and you have you, you say uh, sentence one is entailing sentence two because if a girl is making a snow angel then she is playing outside in the snow so uh, we have 570,000 such sentences um, where the labels are entailment, contradiction, or neutral. So neutral just means unrelated. Contradiction means the two sentences contradict each other. This corpus has been uh, labeled by humans, has been created by humans. And uh, what, what InfraSend is doing, um, 